thank you so much, Ananshu. Uh, and also a very warm welcome to everyone for joining us today's session on uh, employee benefits and its dynamics. Uh, employees, as you all know, are uh, an important asset for any organization, and there's no question about that. And uh, in the era of digitalization, it is even more uh, critical for any organization to focus on the change agents, that is the employees. Now, when combined with unforeseen conditions of pandemic, organizations must guarantee that you know, their employees are not influenced by the great resignation. According to several study, pay remains the most important reason for employees to leave. Uh, however, you know, this might be a bad news for smaller organizations who might not be able to provide that kind of pay. Having said that, this is not the this is not the magic bullet. So benefits is also something that organizations can utilize to attract and retain talent. And in today's session, we will look back at the last two years of the pandemic, the impact on benefit offering and utilization, and the present scenario. And we will also talk about what organizations can do to ensure uh, that they attract and retain the best talent using employee benefits. Now, to begin today's session. Uh, I would continue from our last webinar on uh, attrition hiring, where we saw that the attrition numbers are at an all-time high of 18.1%. And uh, this, of course, is triggered by the phenomenon of the great resignation. Employees are looking for better compensation, flexible work environment, uh, better growth opportunities, uh, and well-being benefits. Overall, employee expectations from work and work environment uh, have evolved over the last two years. And there is a significant impact of benefits that employees are looking for from their organization. To put things into perspective, here are uh, some of our findings from the research that indicate that more than 50% of employees consider benefits as a key factor to enable retention, which, which indicates that employees are valuing benefits as much as, the benef uh, as much as they value compensation. And among the gamut of uh, benefits that an organization can offer, Gen Zs are prioritizing benefits uh, that enable them to live healthy lifestyle, such as mental wellness benefits, uh, and that will help them perform better as well. And organizations have not just been listening, but also acting upon it. So that's the good part that uh, organizations have also had a pulse check, you know, on, on the expectations of their employees, and they have been delivering that. Now, before we delve into the new age benefits, let's take a look at the previous year that has passed by and how organizations have responded to the pandemic per se. So these were some of the benefits that saw an uptick in the past two years, uh, you know, which have been truly uh, years of turmoil uh, for both employees and organizations, while employees had to deal with uh, change in the work environment, job security, ensure, ensuring safety uh, and good health for themselves and their loved ones. Organizations, on the other hand, had to deal with additional costs of revamping the processes, infrastructure uh, to enable work from home setup. Uh, there was a lot of addition to the uh, insurance costs for employees and dependents and relooking at the current benefits and continue providing them uh, through online medium. So that means technology was also something that uh, organizations had invested in. As you see the cost, uh, first cost under the various headers of benefits have gone up to a great extent. For example, we all know that the insurance premiums have gone up. Uh, now, not just the insurance premiums, uh, the coverage in itself has also gone up. So organizations are not just covering the employees, but they are extending the benefit to their uh, families as well. And when I say families, it, it also goes beyond the immediate dependents like parents, but, but to also include parent-in-laws. So from that perspective, organizations have been really supportive. And hence, there's a steep jump that can be witnessed in the insurance cost. Uh, when I talk about employee wellness, uh, this has been a key factor. Like I mentioned earlier, employee wellness is something that employees are looking for uh, and they would want to have a you know good environment to work in where they are uh, you know doing well there, they're mentally stable. And when I say mentally stable, uh, what I mean is that they're able to contribute to the full potential. So organizations have invested a lot more in providing those uh, annual medical checkups, employee assistance program, uh, and not just from a mental level, but also in a financial perspective. Employees have uh, definitely you know, contributed in, in educating the employees on their financial wellness, helping them plan their finances for a better future. That has given a sense of uh, you know, comfort to the employees. So this, these were something that uh, employees have really focused on. And when I talk about reward, you know, reward has always been 
uh, a, fee, a key focus, like like I mentioned earlier, compensation and rewards is something that all the employees uh, will definitely look for. So uh, to keep employees engaged and to reward dedicated employees during these difficult times, organizations have uh, rewarded employees with performance bonuses and they have uh, you know, rewarded the employees for innovation to streamline processes to reduce the stress uh, in the work area. Many organizations have done that and that's why the cost for reward and recognitions have also gone up. Now, since the employees were working from home, uh, you know, organize, uh, since the employees were working from home, organizations had to invest a lot more uh, in engaging the employees. And that's where the gifting comes into uh, perspective. So they were welcome gifts, uh, which as a trend had gained a lot of traction during the pandemic and organizations have used it as a tool to demonstrate uh, a good organization culture. Apart from, uh, you know, just a welcome gift, the organizations have also st uh, stepped up and uh, gifted, organ uh, gifted employees on their birthdays, anniversaries and special occasions like uh, annual day for the organization. So that, so hence the cost for gifting has also gone up. Now, while these, these were the benefits that, uh, you know, we can, we can tangibly uh, uh, kind of calculate. Leaves is also something that is, uh, the, that is something that the organizations have provided. They've understood that during these COVID times, employees, you know, might uh, contract the virus and they might want to uh, take some time off to rest and recuperate and come back uh, in a productive environment. And, and also, uh, this might affect their families. So from that perspective, organizations, uh, you know, have been a pillar of strength for employees and demonstrated how they value their employees a lot more. Organizations have established leave policies that better accommodate the requirements of an employee like uh, COVID leaves, bereavement leaves, uh, and, and so on and so forth. So these are some of the, you know, uptakes and, and these are only a few of them. We have seen the uptakes and a lot more benefits. Uh, but when we talk about uptakes, we also have to talk about what went down because since the organizations or the employees were working from home, there were a lot of benefits that were lesser utilized. And from that perspective, uh, on the next slide, we are going to talk about what went down. So meal facility was uh, you know, an, 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 uh, an important driver uh, when the employees were uh, working from the office. That saw a drastic reduction uh, because the employees were not coming to office. Having said that, it's not that, you know, the organizations uh, have, have saved uh, the cost. So uh, when we say that they were lesser utilized, organizations did not necessarily save the cost. It was diverted towards other benefits. So if I say that meal facility per se was less utilized, organizations shifted uh, to a different mode. They provided Sodexo vouchers and uh, Swiggy coupons so that the employees can still utilize the facility. So it was more diversion. And, uh, you know, when we talk about social activities, this was something, uh, you know, which was a big part of, of organization's budget, you know, those, those outings, those team dinners and lunches, uh, this actually got done away with, to be very honest, because employees were working from home. There was no way that there was a physical connect. So due to the restriction, there was a lesser opportunity uh, for organizations to have such connects uh, with the employees. However, organizations did try to have virtual get togethers like fun Fridays and at times providing dinners and lunches. So uh, we have noticed in the past that uh, in, in the last two years that organizations have at times, uh, you know, uh, selected probably a, a Friday or, or any particular day uh, and they've uh, sent across pizzas and meals to their employees. So this was something that, uh, again, like I mentioned, organizations have not necessarily saved the cost over there, but they've diverted the funds. Uh, and when I talk about daycare benefits, uh, uh, you know, it, it also had a huge impact uh, as, again, there were restrictions and, and uh, physical gathering was, uh, you know, kind of done away with. So organizations, again, uh, could not provide that childcare facility. Having said that, they shifted to something like a, a virtual daycare or a nanny care where they provided employees with reimbursements to have, uh, you know, man, uh, nannies uh, take care of their kids, uh, virtually, of course. Now, while we talked about, you know, what went up, what went down, there were a lot of new additions also. So from the onset of COVID-19 pandemic uh, to now, organizations have ensured that their uh, most valued assets, that is their employees are taken care of. Organizations have committed themselves toward the well-being of their employees, uh, maybe mentally, physically, or financially. 
uh, for the same, we saw some new benefits that took center stage. And when I say new benefits, they were new uh, costs that were added to the organization's budget. So COVID care facilities and vaccines, like big organization had step up, uh, you know, their in-house, or rather they had set up their in-house uh, COVID care facilities, which provided uh, beds, ventilators, and, and also it enabled the employees to quarantine so that they can have a safe environment at home and they have a place where they're taken care. And especially uh, in the last wave where we saw there was, you know, a shortage of oxygen uh, and, and shortage of beds, rather I would say it was more of an uh, increase in the number of cases uh, and, and our medical system felt a bit overwhelmed. That's where, you know, all these benefits came into picture. Having said that, you know, bigger organizations had the budget uh, to do this while it wasn't something that all organizations could do uh you know considering the cost involved many organizations had also tied up with uh, various covid care facilities and hospitals and hotels uh, to enable this kind of uh, benefit for their employees furthermore organizations had also set up contingency budgets to assist employees financially over and above what was covered in the insurance cost. So uh, while we all know that the insurance premiums went up and there was a lot of coverage, which was extended to families uh, and, and uh, near ones, organizations have also set up contingency budgets uh, for those difficult times uh, in ease where, where financially and employees looking for assistance, employees, uh, uh, sorry, organizations stepped up and provide that assistance. And most of the organizations cover the cost for vaccine and uh, also extended the benefits to their families. So it's not just the employees that were covered, but the families could also get uh, vaccinated. And uh, organizations, you know, when, when the whole pandemic began, the first thought was that how would we continue working? So in the view of that, uh, in a view of balancing the productivity and the well-being, organizations mobilize their resources uh, and ensure employees have the basic infrastructure available. From providing laptops to ergonomically certified furniture, all was supported by organizations. And there was uh, you know, a lot of uh, uh, one-time uh, initiative or one-time financial assistance that was provided by the employers uh, to ensure that uh, the employees have a good setup that they can, uh, you know, kind of continue uh, uh, contributing to the best of their abilities and, and to ensure that the productiv productivity is not ha hampered. Along with that, the communication cost, of course, went up. So when I say communication cost, uh, you know, it talks about all the internet, the internet setup at home, uh, the internet plan per se. So communication and continuity of work uh, became an essential and hence organization provided uh, for the setup of internet at home. And like, like we talked about the meal facility in previous slides, food coupons, uh, you know, was, was again something that uh, was prevalent while the meal provided by organizations saw, saw a decline owing to employees working from home organizations switch to other alternatives like Sodexo and Swiggy wallets. So this, this in a gist was, you know, what went up, what went down and uh, uh, what are the new benefits that came along. Now, coming back to where we are today, you know, thankfully we're in a, we're in a better state where uh, those restrictions have come down, number of cases have come down, though, of course, we cannot say that the pandemic is over, but uh, we're in a better position as compared to the last two years. And, uh, you know, we have, we have seen increase and decline in adoption of new benefits. Uh, but as pandemic pandemic slows down, organizations are focusing on bringing the employees back to office. And I think uh, that's the natural course of action for today and tomorrow. Uh, GCOEs are evaluating the possibilities of providing the flexibility to employees to choose to work either from home or office or opt for a combination of two. Uh, now that is subjected to client or security clearance and the discretion of management, but uh, there is definitely a focus shift and, uh, you know, we, we are witnessing it in the current times. And when I talk about, you know, what organizations have done to ensure or rather to uh, bring the employees back to uh, office, there are multiple things. So right from physical infrastructure, having those, uh, you know, zero touch control to allocating seats. So this is something that uh, you know, has been recently uh, seen that the organizations are utilizing technology a lot more uh, to ensure that the smooth transition is there uh, and, and, and to enable back to office. Uh, GCO is equ equipping their infrastructure to ensure uh, safety of their, of their employees. 
organizations have adopted technologies that enable employees to book their seats in advance uh, for the time that they will be working. Now, BASF is one of the examples who's been leveraging their, uh, who have been leveraging their digital solution called Room Wizard to manage bookings and optimize the use of meeting spaces. Now, as for our research, uh, the current state of back to office is that organizations, uh, you know, are asking their employees to come for like two to three days in a week uh, to the office. However, there have been, you know, multiple uh, uh, case studies that have come forward. And uh, if you look at Swiggy, which is which is a very recent example, they've given their employees uh, three options. Uh, first one being the two to three days uh, a week that they'll be working uh, from, from the office. And this is, you know, of course, uh, basis the role. So uh, this applies to, you know, the partner facing roles. Uh, and the second option would be freedom to work remotely. So they can work, uh, you know, any anywhere. Uh, I mean, they do not necessarily need to come office. Uh, for an exception of say a week uh, in in a quarter, and this is uh, you know for for their corporate employees, uh, business functions, and technology employees. So they have the freedom to work remotely, uh, but everybody will come uh, together in in their base location. So that that will be one week in a quarter that everybody will come together. And then third option would be to uh, for the employees would be to uh, you know work full time from their base location. And this could be uh, for roles like their fleet managers who do not necessarily need to come to office. Now, other than this, uh, many employee benefits are again, like I said, making a comeback uh, as organizations start calling employees back to office, uh, like meal facilities and transport facilities, though not at the same level uh, as the pre-pandemic times. Uh, but you know, if the situation keeps getting better and uh, the cases keep declining and the restrictions are uh, not pulled back again, or we do not uh, get hit by a fourth wave, uh, then it seems that uh, uh, that it seems that you know uh, these meal facilities and the transport facilities will soon be back to the stage that they were earlier. And one of the examples is Atel. Uh, they have renewed their contract with the meal vendors and they are providing uh, the meals again to their employees. Uh, at a subsidized cost, of course. Uh, now, um, you know, while we ask the employees to come back, uh, organizations have given a lot more emphasis on making sure that the employees are engaged and, uh, you know, that transition is smooth. So to attract the employees back to office, many organizations have resumed their uh, social activities like team outings and team dinners. Though, of course, uh, there's a limitation on, you know, how many individuals uh, they would want to kind of include. Uh, but since things are in a controlled uh, manner right now, I think those restrictions would also not apply as much. So those team outings and team dinners are back. Uh, also, a very recent example, Star Vista, uh, to smoothen the transition to work from office, asked their employees to uh, come and work from home attire. Uh, and they watched shows and had popcorn uh, on an otherwise regular working day at their workplace. So organizations are engaging employees in these activities. Uh, to make them feel more ease while they work from office again. Now, this is the situation so far. This is what we've seen so far. But what does the future hold? And what is it that, you know, the employees value or, or would want to see, uh, you know, being continued for the future? Now, we have, uh, you know, a host of uh, benefits. Uh, but as, as the pandemic slows down, organizations need to, uh, continuously check the pulse of its employees and provide them benefits that align with the needs of their employees. So this is this is an important aspect that has come out of our research that employees want benefits that are specifically uh, helping them, you know, align their needs. Uh, and some of the current benefits uh, that can help organization attract and retain talent in the coming future uh, could be around, uh, definitely around the employee wellness mental, and uh, mental health benefits. So I think organizations have invested a lot uh, in the past two years to ensure that the employees feel, uh, you know, well. And uh, like I said, it's not just restricted to mental well-being, but also to physical and financial. I think this is an aspect that organizations uh, should continue doing. Uh, and also, uh, the employees are expecting it. So, uh, you know, it worked both ways. So providing, you know, therapist coaches, wellness experts, or even team workshops, uh, which can also be you know, a good engagement activity uh, that can be a good way to help employees uh, deal with anxiety and, you know, uh, feel better when, when they are at the workplace. Uh, 
uh, and then flexible health and wellness stipend where employees can choose what's important for them uh, to stay mentally fit. Uh, you know, it could be anything like yoga, meditation, gym, etc. Uh, now they could be, you know, again, from my engagement perspective, so this can be utilized as both, not just a benefit uh, to provide uh, mental well-being and physical well-being or financial well-being, but also uh, an engagement activity. So employee, employers can, uh, you know, start new traditions like uh, weekly fun hour or uh, weekly no meeting day. And this has already been noticed. So Microsoft is one of the organizations that have, uh, you know, weekly no meeting day or uh, weekly fun hour that, uh, that enables the employees to take that, you know, break and take that time off. Uh, also, organizations can have inclusive benefits uh, that integrate, you know, employees life stage, uh, you know, that are that are gaining ground. This is a benefit that is actually uh, coming up big where uh, employees are providing those employers are providing those inclusive benefits uh, for for different stages uh, of an employees, uh, not just in life, but also in the organization. Uh, upskilling has also you know, kind of come up big uh, organizations or rather the employees uh, expect that, you know, they would want to upskill themselves. Uh, there has been um, a shift uh, in that thought that, you know, it's not just about a promotion or going to the next level. Employees now want to upskill themselves so that they can have uh, opportunities uh, in the future, not just uh, laterally, but also vertically. So uh, role change is something that organizations can utilize uh, to match the aspirations of, uh, you know, their, their talent and especially the critical talent and the high performing talent. Uh, and employer support to employees in learning and developing skills uh, of employees choice in line with the organization's objective, of, obviously. Uh, providing career pathing opportunities like IJPs, uh, promotions and progressions, that can be another thing. Uh, that organizations can continue doing uh, that would keep the employees engaged and, you know, give them a sense of uh, uh, focus uh, when it comes to their performance within the organization. There could also be rotational programs uh, that organizations could provide and uh, organize and employees can be given on-site opportunities. Uh, if I talk about reward and recognition, you know, this, this stays a constant in, in just about all the offerings. So today organizations are uh, deploying recognition program that cut across organizational values, innovation, collaboration, customer excellence, uh, sustainability, and uh, corporate social responsibility, diversity and inclusion, and, and apart, of course, from the performance and tenure. So organizations are gearing towards a micro recognition approach as well. Uh, which lets them reinforce the right behavior, uh, which align with the culture uh, they wish to create within the organization. So diversification of uh, recognition portfolio is becoming a key pillar, uh, you know, of robust uh, employee engagement strategy. Now the last one, uh, flexible benefit. Now this is this is uh, one of my favorites because this, whenever I think about flexible benefits, uh, when I say flexible benefits, first of all. Uh, it, it talks about dispersing benefits, uh, more personalized benefit, and you know implementing those technologies uh, to enable employees to choose the benefit uh, that they align with. But one thing that you know is is uh, intriguing or uh, excites me the most about uh, the flexible benefit aspect per se is that employees are looking for benefits that you know uh, that they would want to utilize for say an year or maybe in the long run also in, in two, three years down the line and they would want those customized benefit. Uh, while the organizations are of course, you know, uh, listening to the employer, employee requirements, uh, but most of the times we've seen that the benefits are kind of standardized, you know, that fits everyone. So I, I, would, I would actually add a question uh, for all of us here that, would employers or organizations consider uh, giving employees the, cho the choice to choose the benefit of their liking? For example, you know, a golf club membership for employee uh, who likes playing golf or probably a membership to a drama club uh, for the ones who are interested in acting in drama. Is that something that, uh, you know, organizations would want to uh, do? And if so, uh, then how maybe we can, we can uh, you know, deliberate on it while we have the panel discussion and uh, during the Q&A session, but you can also feel free to, uh, you know, share your comments on LinkedIn or YouTube, uh, where we have, uh, you know, the recording of this session and, and it's going on live. 
so this would be something that i would personally you know like to take up uh, as we go forward having said that uh, this was you know what we had on what it was in the last two years where we are currently and what are the certain things that organizations uh, can do to uh, engage and retain employees now uh, apart from this uh, like Dhananchu mentions, you know, uh, has expertise in a lot of other things. And in fact, we are having this uh, session right in time where we are about to release our benefits report. Uh, other than that, we are also running a salary increase attrition and hiring survey, which is simultaneously going on and uh, which is expected to be released uh, somewhere in the next month. We do have our uh, campus compensation uh, report that once in two years that we work on, which can uh, you know, uh, help the talent acquisition folks to kind of better align their strategies around the campus hiring. Uh, and of course, the, the compensation uh, offering that we have, the compensation report, the annual report that we come out with, uh, which, which comes out during the month of December each year. While, uh, you know, these are some of the standard offering, we do have the capability of uh, customizing these offerings. So if, if you'd like you know, to, to be a benchmark yourself in terms of compensation or benefits. Uh, that is also something that uh, uh, we are capable of doing. So feel free to reach out to us. Uh, we will share our coordinates with you uh, and you can definitely reach out to us for any of the requirements. Uh, that's, that's all from uh, my side. That's all what I had for today in terms of uh, the benefits, how, uh, what was the past and what is the future and look forward to having a good panel discussion. Uh, I would hand it over to uh, Dhananshu to take it forward from here. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>